Okay, so hey guys and welcome back to another weekly fighting roundup if you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed please do so like the video if you do indeed like the video and let's get straight into it so starting off of course with the boxing news so zhang versus parker vargas versus ball chamberlain versus gwyn huni alamayouf fury and mcgann will fight march 8th it's a good looking a very good looking Ngarnu joshua card that and i'm excited for that of the co-main event i'm I'm really happy to see McGann back on the big cards and back out in Saudi and he seems to have a good thing going there obviously we spoke to him a little while ago now and obviously to be fair that Ball, Ball Vargas fight is an underrated fight as well and so overall a very good card and yet again another very good Saudi card there is now an undisputed world heavyweight champion belt so you know it's just going to be held by whoever is the undisputed champ which will be the winner of fury and garnu no no fury Usyk, um which i i mean I've, i feel like every boxing fan's been calling for for the longest time this to be the case to have just one champion one main champion that everybody knows who he is and we're finally going to get that and it's nice to see that the belt school's going to be given that recognition opatia vs Briadis 2 cordina vs kakase kovala vs sirwan low vs armadi Itorma, Jalolov and Nikia will fight February 17th. That is the um, Gar no, that is the Fiori Usyk undercard. That's also a very good undercard. Optaya, I love watching him fight. I'm very glad to see him back. And this is going to be a very good rematch in a fight which he's been calling for. And I feel like a lot of people have been wanting a rematch for this. And it's going to be good to see. Uh, as well as the Cordina, always good to see him in action against a. a possibly uh, a fighter which could cause him troubles and he could be overlooking but shouldn't be overlooking and then other other big fighters like Kovalev making a return and people like Atorma and Jalolov who's also going to get a big fight Jalolov most probably as well and so you know it's another very entertaining card His Excellency Turkey Alashik won uh, wants the winner of Fury versus Yusik to fight the winner of Joshua versus Ngannou so you know that's perfect it's like exactly what everybody wants uh, he also wants a matchroom versus queensbury card which is now being made and is going to be announced in the fight week of i believe joshua and garnu uh, so you know it's amazing how quickly it's been made and been talked about and just seems to happen like that and so you know it makes it entertaining and i'm sure that's going to be an entertaining and fun card uh uh he uh no uh clark claims that the deal to fight Wardley is close I don't know if that's going to be true or not but hopefully it is and now that Wardley is just kind of being able to do his own thing out in Saudi and be his own free agent to an extent maybe that actually might be a close fight WBC have found Baumgartner not guilty of consumption of banned substances so she's now allowed back fighting and been proved like I said not guilty and it's very rare to get that <coughs> just kind of outright not guilty and so, you know, fair play to Baumgartner in that aspect. Obviously, there must have been some sort of mistake. I don't really know the foot wins and outs of why it was given in the first place to then go to be not guilty. But, you know, either way, she's back fighting now and it's going to be good to see her. She is an entertaining fighter in the division. Moving on, WBA have ordered Bacoli versus Chani, Whitaker versus Gradia, Riley versus Parper, Hennessy, and Hennessy will fight for preferred, Robles versus Davies. And Joyce versus Ali, a set to fight March 16th, which has actually been announced now, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, Barrow will fight Eggington March 1st. Madrimov is set to fight Kurbanov in February or March. IBF have ordered Chukadzian versus Scarf. That's a big fight for Scarf. That is actually going towards world level for Scarf. And obviously, we spoke to him a little while ago as well, but you know, that's world level fight, and that's a big fight that ends up being happening. Uh, Slaymaker has joined SJAM Boxing. Martin has joined top rank. WBA have ordered Lara versus Zarafa. His Excellency Turkey Alashik uh, has said that he wants the winner of Bivol versus Baturbiev to fight Opataya. And he also says that he wants Davis versus Haney in Saudi Arabia. So he basically is just doing whatever he wants now, and you got to respect it. So, you know, he's literally doing whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and yeah so you know he's got all the power in his hands and it's he's just saying all the big fights everybody wants to hear i suppose he also has said that he won't 
bring YouTube boxing back to Saudi Arabia, which I know a lot of boxing, true boxing fans are happy about. So he is saying all the right things at the moment. Pacheco is set to fight McCallum April 6th. De La Hoya has said Garcia versus Ramirez is close, which is then being denied by Garcia, who has said that he does not fight in Ramirez. So it's strange what's going on between them two. I think it's always been strange what's been going on between them two. Gomez Jr. is set to fight Baker. Colazo, Fulgham, Fundora, Cruz, Picasso, Garcia, Cabrera, Canas and Marias will fight January 27th. Catterall has withdrawn from the Hitchens purse bids. Heaney vs. Pauls, Robles vs. Davies. Joyce vs. Ali, Dakers, Parker vs. Zug. McCann vs. Strand and James vs. Cooper will fight March 16th. That's a very good, uh, magnificent seven Queensbury card, I believe it's called. Uh, yet again happening and it's another exciting one and to have some big names and some fighters which I've also spoke to on there like Paul's getting a big opportunity Dakers being on the big stage again and so you know there's some big names on there and hopefully I'll be there for fight a week possibly fight night we'll see how things go um, as it's going to be exciting and I want to be there moving on Fandora has joined Golden Boy and Samson Boxing Billum Smith versus React Port has been agreed so, you know, probably the biggest fight that Sky's got available to them at the moment, most definitely in the cruiserweight division, has now been agreed, which is good. Jalolov is set to fight Ortiz February 17th, which is this fight actually ends up getting happening. That would be a very good fight. Velasquez will fight Smith February 2nd. Rosado is set to fight Munguia, uh, Munguia in four times three minute rounds March 2nd. So I believe that's the first or first official First I've heard of four three minute rounds in women's division, so that's quite big news to be honest. Inui versus Neri has been agreed for May. That's going to be an exciting fight. It could add something a bit different. Uh, Neri is a very difficult opponent. Wet has said she will no longer be fighting on Misfits. PBC's first Amazon Prime video card is set for March 30th. Pacquiao's advisors says he wants Davis or Brooke this year. Um, never know i feel like brooks probably the more reasonable one walker will fight jermaine january 27th o'leary has partnered with four orchard irish stout maxwell has retired it's quite sad to see i was at his last fight and obviously it didn't go his way also spoke to him before that fight and you know he does seem like a really nice guy and he has achieved a lot in his career and you know it's sad to see retirement but he like i say has achieved a lot and it's going to be interesting to see where he can kind of progress onto now Taylor has accepted Catterall's rematch offer, so finally we might actually be able to see that rematch happening. WBA have ordered Cruz versus Rivas, that's a very good fight. Laws is set to fight Lemons April 12th, that's a very strange fight. Pacquiao wants to fight Davies in Saudi Arabia in the summer. Like I said, I feel like the Brook one's probably more likely to happen, but I suppose in Saudi Arabia with the way that things are going, you never really know. His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh has refused to shut the door on the possibilities of Joshua versus Wilder fight. So I suppose that's just basically saying that if Wilder can get back and can get a couple more wins or at least one more big win, then he will be back in the shot again. Canelo won the PBC Fighter of the Year. Tinoco won via TK and Randall 1 versus Furong. Navarro won via TK and Randall 1 versus Hanson. Gonzalez won via Unanimous Session versus Darcy. Resendez won via Stoppage in Round 3 versus Cristobal. Munoz won by stopping in round four versus Carson. Cyborg won by KO in round one versus Wickstrand. And that was interesting. It was very entertaining. The uh, commentator, uh, people weren't a massive fan of him just going crazy during that knockout. It was an interesting knockout. It was an impressive knockout. People are saying that possibly it wasn't what it was all kind of brought out to be. But I mean, from what it looked like, and I don't want to call anything not what it is, but it looked good and it looked very good and for a stoppage in a first round like a big stoppage like that it's impressive i not well i mean i got my prediction right but i didn't think that would be the case and wickstrom i mean i thought she'd possibly be able to do better but cyborg does look like a threat in the women's division so i suppose we'll have to wait and see how she progresses now after a big win like that clark won via tk in round three versus mamedov talon won via points versus yahaya McKenna won via TK in round 6 versus Ellison. Artin still won via points versus Furtado. Jeffers won via unanimous decision versus Brown to remain English super middleweight champion. Shelley won via unanimous decision versus Cullen to become British and Commonwealth super middleweight champion. Jonas won via split decision versus Mayer to remain IBF world welterweight champion. And speak a bit about that card. Uh, we'll start with Artin That was a good performance from her, progressing nicely. 
managed to get another knockdown and it was impressive that it was right by the bell um, but she is progressing nicely and I think her and Price are going to do very well in the women's rankings. Chelly, it was an alright performance. I mean, to be fair, you didn't really seem to get hurt at all and Cullen just didn't really seem to offer much and every time he did try and offer anything, Chelly kind of came in close or Cullen came in close and then nothing really ended up happening. So it wasn't the most entertaining of fights, but Chelly did what he had to do and he did throw some big bangs and he did land some big shots at times, possibly a little bit too wild and reckless and coming in a bit too much and he possibly would have wanted to or I would have wanted him to do and Cullen just couldn't seem to really get the timing down and didn't really seem to let his hands go at any point but Chelly deserved a win and he got the win and then the main event Jonas I mean a lot of people are saying that Mayer deserved the win from what I saw probably would have to agree that Mayer was probably in my opinion winning on the cards I'm not going to call robbery or anything like that because I never do that because I never feel like that's fair on the fighters and the one that won I mean, they still put up a very, very valiant effort to be in a position to go out there and even be up there for the victory. And Jonas did have parts of the fight which he was doing well. And then mid to late round, she was doing well. I think Maya was doing well with her straight shots and consistently landing shots and landing probably to cleaner shots out of the two. But Jonas did good body work. She was letting her hands go at times and was throwing in nice combination flurries and I mean, you'd have to argue that, like I said in my prediction, the home fighter managed to get the win. But I would like to see the rematch. Hopefully, it will happen. I said in my prediction, I got it right. I said it would be a very close fight. And I would be a decision win for Jonas. And I got that right. And, you know, even though maybe possibly Maya could have and should have got it, Jonas, congratulations to her. And, like I say, the valiant effort that she put up. And, like I said, I would love to see the rematch now. Brooke won via KO in round 3 vs Bunker. Raksu drew vs Rose. Ham won via KO in round 1 vs Not Logan Paul. Fox the G won via KO in round 1 vs Spartan J. DTG won via TK in round 2 vs Raksu. Williams won via Unanimous Decision vs Batista. Knight won via TK in round 3 vs Most Wanted. Demur won via Unanimous Decision vs Minicon. Pineda won via KO in round 2 vs Matthews. And to speak about that card, the Misfits card, obviously I've done my prediction for all of these fights. So the Brooke won. KO round 3 vs Bunker. I got my prediction right. I said that Brooke would win. Very impressive stoppage to be fair. The first Misfits big stoppage like that. And I think she is improving. She is physically strong as we've always kind of been able to see. And there's more technique there now. I think she, even though the fight was scrappy and it was very much just holding on the inside, you could see improvements much so from the first fight between the two. And so I definitely think Brooke is up there with the best Misfits. Well, one of the best influencer boxer female boxers and so she is showing that there is ability there uh, compared to some of the fights which I've seen which have just been pure not ability at all but there's still room to improve but it was a very good stoppage Raksu drew vs Rose to be honest I feel like that is a fair draw I think they both run, won two rounds I think if it was a five round fight obviously it would have been different and we could have actually had a resounding winner but I think it was a draw from what I saw and so you know the draw is fair enough it was a good fight uh, the Ham one versus not Logan Paul uh, oh, I didn't predict the draw right. Um, but the Ham one, I said the Ham would win. It was a stupid fight. It was quite an entertaining fight, to be honest. While it lasted, I was laughing. It was a very strange fight. Um, it's there's always a couple of these on the Misfits card, but I, sp I suppose fair play to Ham. But not Logan Paul was. It was a strange fight. Uh, Foxy G KO in round one versus Spartan J. I didn't get that one right. It was a very impressive KO and a very impressive stoppage and. It was good to see Spartan J be all right after that stoppage. And, you know, that's a huge, huge stoppage and one of the biggest that we've seen in Misfits Boxing. And Foxy G, from being just a young guy himself, to be able to perform that and deliver that level of a stoppage, it's more down to, I think, accuracy and timing and being able to put it together, a combination together where the defence, there wasn't really much defence to counteract it. And it was very impressive. And uh, so all credit to him. I did got that one wrong. The DTG one, I got that one right versus Raksu. Uh, Williams, I got that right versus Batista. That was an all right performance from Williams. He did look good. And I think there's potential there, but I think he just needs to keep improving and steadily improving. I wouldn't say get too confident, confident yet. Uh, the Knight one, I got the right versus Most Wanted. Knight did look very good in that fight. Demur, uh, I got that one wrong versus Minicon. That was a strange fight as well. Demur just pretty much just rugby tackling Minicon every two seconds. I'm surprised he didn't get more punishment for doing that but you know he didn't and he managed to get unanimous decision victory which he probably did deserve in the end 
Uh, the Pinedo, obviously, I didn't really give a prediction for that one because he, he was a mystery opponent at the time. But Pinedo, he looked all right, to be fair. Matthews did very much tire out very early on and didn't really have any much more technique than just throwing wild hooks. Um, but Pinedo managed to work it together, kept it together after being knocked down and managed to come back. And so, to be fair, he's improved himself as well. And I think he is going to be a key factor moving forwards in the Misfits divisions and rankings. And I think him being around there is going to make for good fights in the in the future because he's going to be that kind of gatekeeper fighter before you get to the big names in the divisions and so you know that's going to be somebody who i'm sure misfits is going to keep around even if he doesn't always get the wins uh moving on lara is set to fight lugo february 16th char has called out shizora joshua and fury ryan will fight anue march 18th that not being uh the Nui everybody knows the deal for anue uh and Estrada is set to fight Valle. March 29th, that is on a co-main event I believe of Tafawa's Wilson card uh, but that should be main event, that is a big fight, I'm excited for that finally to be made and I really do hope it actually does end up going ahead now, it seems like it's probably is going to actually end up happening which like I say I'm very excited for. Moving on now to the MMA news, Barnett sets fight to Usman March 23rd, that is a fun fight but a difficult fight for Barnett, I love Barnett but Usman is going to be a tough fight but it makes for an entertaining fight that one. Ferreira vs Bader Kasangane versus Eblen, Pinedo versus Friere, Mago Medikerimov versus Jackson, Santos versus Romero, Colado versus McKee, and Capeloza versus Nemkov will fight February 24th. That's the PFLX well, versus Bellator card, which I'm going to do a prediction for because that is an entertaining card and it's an underrated one, I think. Just putting the two organizations together is very good to see and it's something which makes for a really intense entertaining card and i'm surprised that this hasn't really happened earlier but it's nice now they're merging together that we get to see these two organizations fight and hopefully in the future we can see more organizations put their best versus the other organizations best and i feel like without the saudi money possibly we probably won't end up seeing that but for the moment we've got this pfl versus bellator card and like i say it is very entertaining on paper gaethje versus holloway and Green versus Miller will fight April 13th. So that's the UFC 300 card building gradually every week. And the Gaethje versus Holloway one was one which was a fight which I said I wanted to see in 2024. And it's good to see where we actually are getting it. Patterson will won by a submission round one versus Lanese. Robertson won by a in round eight versus Viana. Tavares won by a decision versus City. Woodson won by a decision versus Jordan. Armfield won by a decision versus Katona. Uh, Evloev won via decision versus Allen. Curtis won via decision versus Barry Alt. Magni won via K in round 3 versus Malot. Duplessis won via decision versus Strickland to become UFC middleweight champion. Pennington won via decision versus Bueno Silva to become UFC bantamweight champion. And to speak about that card, uh, some fights which stuck out to me. Tavares versus Sidi was a great fight to be fair. Uh, just what I put it out there was a great fight and it was a blood gutsy fight from both. And there's always them kind of fights on the UFC cards where it's in the lower weight classes but they do put together a big car a big fight and a back and forth fight with a lot of blood and kind of a lot of damage being given on both sides uh, the Woodson versus Jordan one I mean the fight I didn't really manage to catch but it was sad to see what happened I feel bad for Jordan with what happened with him thinking he won and getting all excited and then him finding out he didn't win it is sad because you know it is playing with emotions a lot and when you feel like you get a win and you've done all that work and you actually get the announcement and get your hand riz, risen, risen, I don't know what the right word is, but it is sad that it didn't actually end up being him and obviously uh, Buffer didn't do anything wrong with the announcement, the ref did, but you know it was kind of sad. Um, Magni, good to see him back with a big stoppage victory. Um, obviously he's been around for a long time in the sport and in the UFC and it's nice to see he's still managing to get the big stoppages as well uh, Duplessis winning via decision versus Strickland that was uh, a back and forth fight people didn't think that he deserved to win in my opinion it was close probably would have to argue that Strickland won it obviously I'm going against the kind of decision again but yeah, again, I'm not going to call robbery and Duplessis, he did work well. I got my prediction right in that aspect. I thought Duplessis would be able to stop him on the ground and get a submission, to be fair. But Strickland did very well on the ground, better than I thought he would, and managed to kind of evade that and get up to his feet every time he did get grounded. And so, you know, Strickland did put out a very good performance. He did get cut and damaged a lot, but of course he has that warrior mindset to keep getting through that. And, 
you know, in the end, he didn't get the victory, but the rematch would be there, and it would be very entertaining rematch, as this first fight was very entertaining as well, but I don't know if we're going to end up seeing it or not. Uh, and the Pennington one, a decision versus Bueno Silva, people were slating this fight, saying it wasn't really too interesting. I got the prediction right for it. I thought Pennington would win. Uh, I think it was an, an interesting fight. Bueno Silva, I mean, to be fair, Pennington did kind of just stop any of Bueno Silva's power, really, shots coming through, and did a very good job at shutting that out, to be fair, and just outworking it and grappling if necessary. And so, you know, it, she did what she had to do. The game plan worked. She managed to become champion. I'm sure she's going to end up fighting Pena next. But I feel like I don't know where the women's divisions are at at the moment now that somebody as big as Amanda Nunes has left, where these divisions are actually going to end up progressing in the future. And we do need that one standout star. Pennington, I don't know if it's going to be able to be that, but it's nice to see her story where she has come from the part, earlier parts in her career where she was losing and things weren't going the best to now where she is the champion. Uh, Edgar has been inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame and that is all the news for this week. Hope you did enjoy. Like the video if you didn't do like the video, subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching.